Hello and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you a 3XL gimbal. Uh, it has built-in battery and it can hold up to around 2.5 kilograms medium-sized camera with a lens. Now there is a compatibility list of all the lenses combination with the uh, camera that this one can operate. But at the end of the day, as long as your camera is well balanced um, and less than 2.5 kilograms, then it should work with the basic function of um, stabilization. So this is very good for people who need to film uh, dynamic uh, motions or shooting like B-roll for products. At the time of this uh, video is made, this one costs you about 250 to 270 pounds. Um, that will be about the same in American dollars if you are across the ocean. So I'll make a video to show you guys what your money can buy. Uh, you can watch my video before you actually spend your own money. So this is my first heavy duty 3XL gimbal, which can hold a DSLR. So I'm really excited to mount this with the camera that I'm using over there. So it comes with a very nice paper box. You can see the product image in the front here. You see, uh, you can app control. It got a 2,500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, that's about it. In the front here, you got a G series lens in the front. So I guess they're supposed to be a Sony, but they're not endorsing any company. So um, I'm just guessing this G logo means that it's a Sony lens. Anyway, let's open it and have a look because I'm sure you are dying to see what is inside. Well, I am dying to see what is inside. So let's open this and have a look. It's like a pizza box. So you open it like this and you will see your instruction booklet, some QR codes for um, learning how to use this uh, product. So I think they have uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So um, there are lots of support on the internet that you can find. Ooh, look at this. Very good layout. It's almost like a well-rehearsed uh, um, presentation here. Uh, let's start with this corner here. So you have your um, tripod. This is the best type of um, tripod because it actually lay flat on the table. So this one will give you the maximum kind of a support. It's a couple of brackets. Now it's very important to have a nice solid bracket because you, you are holding your um, 2.5 kilogram uh, gear that will be your your camera and your lens so having this kind of a quick release plate will help to mount the camera a lot easier and in this box here what we have is some cables so you have a lot more um, tripod mount screws a whole lot of cables now this one have um, they all have tags on them so a USB-C to TRS 2.5 so these are like a signal Kind of cable a usb-c cable so this is for charging the main battery in the gimbal and you got this little device here with a kind of a uh, sponge on top so this is like your lens holder so if you're using a very heavy lens which is kind of extend out this is like something to support it further down from the sliding bracket look at that it does look quite intimidating as uh, let me see this supposed to flip out oh yes Yeah, I saw in one of the video that they explained that this is like a kind of a uh, table standing kind of a position. So my impression so far is this is quite intimidating because like, you know, there just seems to be a lot going on at first. So for anyone who haven't used a gimbal before, then, um, you know, best to watch some kind of an instruction video first. I have watched a few of them and um, it doesn't look that complicated. Although if you use this for a while, then you might find that there are more and more function that you might use rather than just the gun and shoot type of uh, function. You can actually use your app to do a lot of interesting um, creative um, videos with this. The handheld grip itself is really short and the trigger button is here, which you can like use it like a kind of a gun. The places where you grip, they have those uh, rubberized material, which is really, really nice. So this one has mainly metal body. So all these uh, support are metal and they have uh, rubber grips here. A dial control. Ooh, I like this one. This one have resistance to it. So this one have a really nice and smooth motion. I think for uh, some cameras, I'm going to test it out. For some camera, you can actually use this to adjust the uh, focus ring. So when you're shooting, you don't need to like twist around the, the lens to make it move. You can actually use this one to adjust the, the focus range of your lens. 
It's got a couple of buttons on the side here. You got FPV, um, a reverse. So you got one, two, power button on this side, A and B. I'm going to explain all this later on when I start playing with it. And then you got a rear handle right here, which got a host of button here. One on the side, well actually one on each side. I say there's loads of things going on with this design here. Now this is what we call a locked position. You have, you can unlock all the gimbal XO by pressing down on the silver buttons. So now this one has been unlocked, so it can actually move with all the motors. So the base motor here is a 360 motor. That means that it doesn't end. So for those who are interested to do inception mode, which where the screen actually rotate 360, um, this one have no restriction on this XO. Now, the second XO from the base, this one have a limiter. So you can only go so far and then it will stop. It will hit the stopper. And same as the final XO. So only the base XO here is a 360, the rest are not. So I hope the footage doesn't deteriorate too much. I do have loads of lights here, so my GoPro 9 should pick up quite a good image in 4K, but I won't know until I go into processing, so I apologize in advance if um, the video is not clear enough. Now here is the gimbal here. I'm ready to put my um, Canon EOS R on it. And uh, yeah, I have the Canon 10 to 18 mil lens in front, which is a really kind of a compact lens anyway. And I have an adapter here because I don't have one of those newer hour lens. So this is one of those EFS lens. It's kind of a budget version for uh, relocking a wide angle 4K. I've been using that for a couple of years now for all my footage. So I will mount this into the gimbal like that. That's my idea. And um, I'm just going to do it now. So now I'm super excited because I'm ready to switch on the gimbal. It's not 100% balanced, but I think it should be good enough. So power button is on this side of the gimbal. I'm going to leave it on the table and then just press it and hold it until we switch on. Okay, so that's it. Um, LED lights up here on the side. So it shows you that how much battery there is in the moment. So there is kind of a two one green light and one yellow light in the middle so it should be around 50 percent i think well it's already balancing the the camera and i haven't hear any motor noise so i think we are kind of in business with this already now there is two modes to use this so obviously you can like you know hold it like this is a grip i mean you can add another um extension stuff here yeah a lot more stable actually so yeah so this one now makes this handle a lot longer so for me this is like holding a sword thing with the camera on top i mean um, if i need to hold on to the camera for half an hour an hour as such i think this will be a lot more energy efficient oh i hear a bit of a motor noise because it's working overtime this is actually the hardest thing for a gimbal to do to stay facing forward with all three motor engaged i'm going to flip these two legs Back because I won't be using that now. And the other way to use it is hold it like this, like um, pointing forward like this. This is the most common to be honest, I think. But with this, you need to two hands and then use the other hand to control the camera. Oh, this is 
this is really smooth. All the setting can be done on the phone app, which I will show you again, which I will show you guys later. But here, just this is really smooth. Quite intuitive because, like the most of the other Game Boy and even the same brand, if you double click the trigger, it kind of center everything, which is really, really useful when you are starting to pan and move with the joystick button and it's no longer true front. So when you point the front, actually put off side. The easiest way to fix this kind of thing is if you double press the trigger, it kind of fades back into the middle for you. So after I done the unboxing video last night, I really couldn't sleep because I was so excited about you know using these products and showing you guys what this is capable of. The more I think about it, the more I think this is a very good value for money. I'm not selling you the product, I'm not asking you to buy it, but for me personally, this is really well worth the £250. From Feiyu Tech, you've got a couple of options for um, these particular range. So I got the Scopy C, which is the cheapest out of the uh, three. Um, basically, it has most of the function of the more expensive ones, except it doesn't have the LCD display where the handle is. So there's no touch screen. Now I'm quite old school and the function that I use don't really warrant that extra couple of hundred quid. And um, the, the second model up will be just the Scope without the C and that comes with a handy carrying case and also have the touch screen. Now the version after that is the Pro. I think that one can, ha can handle a much heavier payload. I think up to like 4.5 kilograms of payload. It can do wireless stuff. So for example, you can actually have the um, control part of it detached from the actual gimbal thing. Now I don't, any I don't need anything fancy like that and definitely I'm not going to spend another like four or five hundred pounds for those kind of options. So for an amateur videographer or for an amateur photographer, this is perfectly suited what I need for my YouTube channel and to make video for you guys. While I was doing my research for the perfect gimbal for me, I didn't find much information on the internet about the Scopey. And there's lots of um, reviews on the next model up, which is the one with LCD screen. But to be honest with you, most of the uh, information is relevant apart from the touch screen. Um, the card that comes with this have QR code on it. If you go to the YouTube channel here, it actually tells you the uh, the more expensive model with the LCD screen and not this kind of a, a lower model. The instruction booklet, it is quite good to use for uh, getting to know your gimbal, like all the buttons, etc. Um, there's quite a few buttons around here, which is like, quite unique to this product. So um, it takes me some time to figure out what is what, and I will tell you what I like and what I don't like in a very short moment. If you scan the QR code inside the information booklet, it takes you to the five short video, which is relevant to this particular product. The most important part is balancing your camera. So there's a few tips and tricks about how to balance your gimbal. Plus it does have some markers like sliding markers that you can use to, um, to remember the uh, position of your camera so you make it easier next time for you to mount it. Now I didn't balance it perfectly but to be honest with you the power from the motor is perfectly fine for um, balancing your camera even if you're a bit out of the um, not perfect balanced. There is a auto um, balancing function which is basically this button here. Now one of the things I don't like about this gimbal is that everything is so tight. I understand they want to make a gimbal which is really compact and easy to carry around, but at the same time, the buttons are kind of like, you know, in the way. For example, this button right here, if you are holding it like a uh, crystal grip, very easily the side of the index finger will touch this button. Now, it's nothing is going to happen when you press it once, press it twice or stuff like that. But when you press and hold it for, let's say, uh, a long time, let's say you press it by mistake and hold it, what it will do is it will activate a auto calibration cycle. You wouldn't want to do that while you're shooting a video. So now it auto um, calibrates all the motors to suit what it needs. I personally don't like that. Because what I find is 
the auto tuning is not as accurate as how I want the gimbal to behave. When it auto tune and calibrate the motor, I don't feel much benefit in terms of like, you know, the motor responsive and stuff like that. What I actually find is that um, it overcompensate on the tilt axis, maybe because I haven't balanced it perfectly how it should be. But what I find is I actually like the minimum amount of power and it does the job anyway. So I don't know why I need to auto tune it while when this one is working perfectly fine. So, I mean, if, if you're expert in this field and you find that, you know, auto tuning is better because of a reason, please put it in the comment section and let me know. I'm not an expert in terms of like, you know, by all, by any means, I'm not an expert on a gimbal, but I do test a lot of gimbal because I come across a lot of them. Um, I'm still yet to find my perfect gimbal. Maybe this one will be for a few years. I'm pretty sure in a few years something else will come along and um, beat this one. I'm jumping the gun here because I'm not scripted, but actually um, this is a good way to show you guys what the gimbal can do combined with your phone. If you turn into the instruction where you say download the app, you got QR code for App Store, iOS or Play Store for Android. And the app is called Fei Scope, basically just the name of the product and the company. Once you download that, when you press connect, you will find um, the gimbal via um, Bluetooth and you come to this screen right here, which is the starting screen. Here you got a lot of different settings like, you know, scenario, which I use the most because you can do auto rotation. You can do panoramic to make it like a smooth movement, uh, time lapse, track video. So those are the basic function which I have come across before in other gimbal. So they are nothing special. They are kind of standard. I love this wheel control in the front. I mean, I have gimbal before with a wheel, so this is not new, but I think this is almost like essential um, to uh, any gimbal. But to put it but to push it one step further, if your camera is compatible, so like here, I have a USB-C cable to a USB-C port in my uh, Canon EOS R. You can actually change the function of the tilt or roll or pan. Those are basic, but you can also do electronic focusing. So when you press the button and if your camera is compatible, you can actually use the um, wheel to set focus for um, your uh, camera. I don't need to spend more money on a separate device which put onto the gimbal. So when you turn the knob, it turn a uh, motor, which turn the focusing ring and all the hustle. Uh, with my camera, I don't need that because I got electronic uh, focusing in here. All you need to do is pair um, Pair this to your device. Actually, you don't need to what I'm talking about. So all you need to do is find the uh, camera output port here and then plug it into your camera with the included cable and then um, choose electronics focusing on the app and then you can actually use this to control your focusing, which open a lot of opportunity for making interesting video. So in and out of focus with the panning together will make some really interesting shots. The build quality is really good. It is a bulky device because it has to hold up a DSLR camera. So it's not like a pocket size stuff that I can just put in my back pocket and, and go around with it. So in that sense, maybe have a case will be a good idea for this. Um, like I say, if you buy the more expensive uh, version of this one, then it comes with a case. So I might need to have a case for this. You might think that, okay, maybe I'm doing studio work mainly and I don't need one of these devices. Think again, because um, I can get away with not having a, a video uh, tripod head because this is now my tripod head. Just imagine this is my tripod and I have it in a position where I want it. And instead of having to go around and adjust like angle and stuff like that, all you need to do is while the gimbal is active, just push it to the direction that you want. And what it will do is it will hold that position for you. So at the moment I have tilt, which is locked. So uh, the camera will always be horizontal, but you can actually change the direction of where it's pointing the pan and change the tilt manually and it will hold in place after you let your hand go. So this become a kind of a fluid head. 
it does use battery but you can always like you know have it plugged in because the port is just in the front right here so as long as it's a power then you can use it as a tripod head okay it's a beautiful day here in london and it's perfect day to test this outdoor i'm in my garden and you can see part of my reflection the gimbal is working and is well balanced so it's kind of working really well and if I hold out in the arm's length and give it a triple click and there we are perfect day today The stabilization of this um, 3 axle gimbal is actually quite pretty decent plus the built-in uh, stabilization of the lens on my Canon EOS R it should be quite stable obviously the only thing that they wouldn't stable is the up and down motion like any other gimbal so if I do this of course it's going to be a bit shaky but you try to keep a level uh, amount of uh, stabilization and I think this is uh, pretty awesome so this is the end of my video. If you find my information useful, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel to help me grow. I can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget. Bye-bye.